Hi, welcome on this beautiful Axopa 37XC here down in Mallorca. Um, this is, uh, yeah, I would say my first video in English. Uh, and I apologize already now for probably many wrong spelling or wrong wording I'm going to choose because uh, yeah, I'm not a native speaker for sure. So I have been doing these many, many, many times in German, but not that much in English. Um, I'm doing that in English because this boat here is a boat in a tender setup, um, uh, which uh, was, you know, um, made from my workshop in Germany into it being a tender uh, or with some options which makes it very good as a tender. For example, it has a quick gyro system uh, installed as well as a towing point and some other details I'm going to show you right now. First of all, we are on a 2000. 20 Axapa 37XC. We have the optional sunbed installed here in the front where we have a storage below. This sunbed was not on the first boat but it was um, yeah, what is really needed down here in Mallorca. Um, yeah, just from sizing um, it's easy to people being able to lie down here and still very safe as we always pointed that out in other videos how you can walk here on the side from the sunbed. Then we go uh, when we start here in the front for the whole anchor setup which was really much approved in my point of view uh, on the 37XC since 2020 so we still have the ultra, ultra anchor bracket and the very good ultra anchor it's a 12 kilo uh, this is one of the, I would say, most expensive, but also best anchors on the market. It comes from Turkey, stainless steel. And then we have the Maxwell anchor winch, which is free fall as well as normal uh, use. Uh, and we have on this boat here, in particular, a 50 meter uh, inox chain. Normally it's de uh, delivered standard with a 25 meter um, yeah, normal, um, how you say, metal, metal uh, uh, galvanized uh, chain. We also have the shore power here in the front. Uh, we still have enough space to put uh, easily six fenders in there. Then we have the control of the anchor winch here on the starboard side. We also have a remote and also storage here for ropes and as well uh, the shore power cable. Uh, why is the shore power in the front? Uh, because we moor this boat very likable to, with the front towards the pier to have the outboards fully out of the water. Um, then we have optional on this boat the Aztec setup, which is um, like a, a, a plastic flooring, uh, which is an option which protects the glass fiber below and it gives a good walking feeling. Then on this boat we don't have the galving doors, so if you don't own the galving doors, which would be now opening like this, um, and you could exit, um, um, you could not exit, you could uh, access the front cabin uh, through these two sides, uh, then it's still this piece in there more or less. It still looks like a guarding door, but it's not openable. So for a tender use, I think it's quite good not to have it because uh, the boat will be used in really rough conditions. And uh, so this is, in my opinion, for a tender, the right choice not to take them. Then we have here, this is also something for a private user, but very much good also for a tender use. It's a solar panel because the boat could be quite long time not being moored under shore power. So we always have a little bit standby um, power use. And with this 120 watt solar panel, uh, we get like with this weather we have now three, four amps out of the solar panel, which will be enough to always have the batteries full, sorry, fully charged, even we are not on board. So what makes the Axopa unique is um, her low center of gravity. This we're feeling when we're walking the boat here on the side, um, how deep we are in the boat. And like the, the railing is uh, like I'm, I'm 170 high. So this is uh, uh, not 178 high at all. Uh, so so the, the railing is at my hips and I can really walk here still with my hips without needing to do like a sidewalk. Um, then we're having new on this 37XC standard, this step here on the side. So also good for tenders. So we can really good get uh, easy off board and on board. Then a big difference to the cabin we had before is this huge side door. Uh, we just had it locked here. So the side door is much bigger than it was before. 
and it's fully opening to the back and to be locked here. Um, the whole atmosphere inside of the boat is very light. We will show that later when we go inside. Um, moving backwards here, the, the sidewalk is a little bit open and opening up. Um, what is um, special on the Axopar is the, the different setups you can have and basically you always have the same boat, which is we have here the cabin boat. You can have the boat as a spider, as an open boat or as a sun top with the roof, um, but not more or less the glass that you have here on the side, which is also, I would say, even the more chosen tender boat. If I would choose a tender or even a boat for the mat, I would even I would most likely go for a cabin boat, which I will show you later when we are inside. But the aft deck is to be um, chosen what you like. Uh, there's uh, four versions uh, when it comes to the aft deck. So if you go with the standard, it's a fully open aft deck. So there's nothing here in the back, just these fender storages, which I explain just later on the side. But all the middle part here, this is all in this floor level and we have two hatches down there. Then. Uh, you can have a bench here, which is like this deep. We'll put some drawings of it uh, into the video so you understand it. So we have the bench here and then we can have three chairs here. So you more or less have a like a normal cockpit setup. You can even have a table then here and sit here on some cushions on here. So to sit here in a, a normal boat cockpit and you have the sunbed in the front. Then you have the possibility of having a wet bar there. Still possibility to have the three chairs here, still to have the possibility to have the cushions there. And then you have the wet bar here with a sink, with a fridge, and uh, if you want, like with a 220 or gas cooking field. Uh, then we have the most famous one in the past, I would say, it's the aft cabin. That means that this same size like this uh, cushion now is just like this high, like the outside and there's glasses on the side, there's hatches on the front, and this area is accessible from the inside, and then you have a complete double bed down here. Uh, still, you're having the sun bed. What we are on now is the last one out of four. It's called the multi-storage. It's for me the most uh, convenient one, especially for the Mediterranean, because you have like a full-size sun bed here in the back, and you're still having like easily being lying here with three people. Again, this is all also uh, for the sun top. But then, in addition, you have a big storage here in the back. And this is, I think, very nice because we just thrown just the, all the covers in here. We have the, the uh, sun covers lying in there. And normally it's even bigger. This wall you can see there in the front. There behind we have hidden the quick which you can hardly hear, I think, because I just turned the engine off. So it's the gyro stabilizer working on 12 volt now behind this wall. And we have five extra batteries installed in that boat. So this is now running on 12 volt, just out of the batteries. Uh, we can show later inside how much um, battery this takes but it makes us being here lying just in the bay of, in front of Adriano uh, to be a very stable boat. And this is very much like for sure for tenders, but as well uh, for owners, because it makes you like being really comfortable on board. You're not afraid of glass, glasses dropping uh, from the table or you would be moving in stable on board. Uh, then we have a, a water ski pole here in the back. This is also for all the boats available. This uh, water ski pole, even if you're not going to go water skiing, is very nice because when you get out of the bathing ladder in this area, it's a very good place to hold on. Uh, beside it being, as I said, a water ski pole, but also when you walk here, it's like a high handrail where you always can grab two being in front of the engines. Engines we have on this boat, the sticker has been taken off. As it is a tender, it, it is more slim design, more like more understatement. So we're having still two Mercury 300 horsepower. Uh, this is the new V8 engines. We're having the GPO, the joystick pilot system. Uh, so we have Skyhook. We uh, have the possibility, now we get some side waves. It's gonna be interesting how the quick works with that. Um, we're having, uh, yeah, um, the, the so the boat is still moving, but we can feel really how the quick is hunting in. 
Yeah, now we feel it. So the, the amplitudes the boat is doing through these waves is much, much smaller. You can really feel it. I don't know how you could see it, but we do it later in the video a little bit more in detail. Back to the engines. V8, uh, 4.6 liters, uh, came in the market about one and a half years ago. The lightest V8 engine in the market. Um, really, really good engine. Very uh, uh, modern when it comes to uh, service, like service checking the oil um, pin, or I say oil, uh, yeah, to check the oil is here, to fill up oil, you don't even need to take the whole casing away. As I said, it's joystick system. Joystick system means each steering has its own um, control, electric hydraulic. So the engine, if you go sidewise or whatever, even go uh, like in, in different ways, uh, they're not moving parallel. Um, then we have one bathing that are standard on the port side and we have on this boat an extra one which is a little bit more comfortable and going a little bit deeper in the water which is an option since this model. Um, yeah, We have the sun pole holders here, we have put the sun, um, as, um, sun poles on the roof uh, in our uh, in, in the, our version, I think it's better to store them. So you put them in here and you can also put two in the front and that makes uh, a complete shaded area here. Then I said before we're having the storage here in the back for the fenders uh, and also for ropes. The same on the other side, including the shower, which on this boat is even with warm water. So since 2020, it's, it's uh, an option to have a, a boiler, so uh, a warm water heater. So we have uh, warm water at the fridge and also inside on the sink. Then we're having on this boat the fish rod holders here on the side, uh, on the back, sorry. And we have the new mast up there with the radar left below the horn and then as well two antennas, one is radio and one is uh, like VHF and one is radio. Walking starboard side into the inside. So now we're inside. Before we starting to use the boat, I just want to walk you through the inside a little bit. So um, being on the, on the cabin boat, uh, we have a big L sofa here, which is uh, fully enclosed with the um, side windows here, um, easily to be seated by five people. So there is where I, my personal opinion, it's very convenient to use this boat as a commuter because another commuter as a tender because you want to take the guests or the owner safe into land, but especially also maybe late night back home to the big boat. And this here gives them a feeling like being in a taxi. So very safe, they can hold themselves here, they have uh, uh, hand rails all over the boat and they are very in-house, but as you can see, the glass framing is, especially here in the back with this, I like that very much with this concave uh, uh, areas here. It's a very, you know, nice feeling being here inside. It, you don't have the feeling to be in a fully enclosed boat. Uh, I also will show you uh, when I'm fr in the front uh, how to open the roof to get even a more open feeling. I just want to show where the gyro is then installed. So my guys in Germany, we made this cover as well here. So below this cover, accessible from the back, we're having the gyro installed and we're still having the complete storage below here to be used for private uh, issues or private storage as well as we have that below here. Good. Um, I'm just, I don't know, what is new also if you compare old and new, 37, it's possible, not so easy, but to get out here from the back, even not passing the driver's seat. So what is a very open, a very often used setup for that boat is, especially when you're going back in the evening, I always saying like when you drive, this boat is made to drive you or your your customers or, or whatever, your family, uh, to a bay, on back from the bay, securely safe on 35 knots, very economic. So 35 knots means the wind temperature is the water temperature, plus the effect of the wind. 
So when we are running in June or, or May in the Mediterranean, or even in like late September, October, we can easily have a water temperature around 23, 24 degrees. So if you run then a speed of 35 knots, then it's the feeling of 20 degrees that people are going to have. And especially when you are, are commuting people from a nice restaurant back home, they don't want to have the feeling of being exposed to 20 degrees of wind. And here you can, if you have the feeling now, when we just start the engines, I have the side doors closed, which is not the right word now because we have quite hot. But uh, you can, f like, I'm fully enclosed, but the roof is completely open. So you have a kind of feeling like if you want to be outside, you can go on the front sunbed, you can go on the back sunbed, even the back sunbed, you're fully sheltered by the cabin. Uh, also the boat is very few moving in the back, uh, or, or, or the fuse of the whole boat is the movement in the back and fully sheltered by the wind. Or you're being inside here and having the complete roof open when it's like a sunny day in spring or in autumn. The summer setup is completely different. In the summer, you're gonna open the side doors on both sides and you're going to close the roof because you don't want to be exposed to the sun or you leave it open like this Axapa made this so you you need to push the rest uh, of the roof in but if you're here at the helm now you have the wind from the side you can even step out people who know my videos from uh, Nimbus in Germany I always like to be here outside you can even control the boat when you go slow here from the outside. You have a very good maneuver overview uh, and you easily step inside. You can stand at the helm, very important for me, for a, a good drivable boat. And for sure you also can sit very comfortable on a very good height here. And this is a typical Mediterranean setup where you have the roof mostly closed, you get the wind in and you get the wind from the sides. I think that was it uh, from the general uh, part of the cabin. Now we, we go into a little bit in driving. And when we go into driving, we disconnect. Uh, we still let it run, but we disconnect the quick. And uh, I will, this we can do from the plotter. This is a normal chart plotter. We have another chart plotter here. So this boat has two Go 12 chart plotters. Uh, this boat also has a radar. So I could even do, oh, sorry, that was wrong. I could do a radar overlay here. Let's start the radar. And now we have the radar running. And we have this big ship there in the front. Let's zoom a little bit out. So that's a very nice function I found. You know, we have one boat there in the front. And we have the big ship out there. Now well, a little bit more out. Good. Um, we have the joystick piloting. We will come more about this when we go back in the bay. Uh, we have the VHF, we have a search for light, we have a heater, and that's the remote we have for the um, bow thruster and as well the anchor winch. We have the control of the roof, bow thruster, which are absolutely is also necessary, which I'll show later, also when we have the joystick system. We have a separate chart plotter, it's called Vessel View, it's from Mercury, which I also recommend because then you can use this for all the controls and have one here dedicated for the engines. We're having the trim flaps, we're also going to show now when we're driving how to use that. And we still like to say how slim and how nicely set up is this helm. Yeah, with this, I don't know, plastic, textile, anti-reflection, uh, this edge here, anti, anti, like to, to c cover the sun, it's a little bit like a car design really really nice and then as we have a heater we have here the outlet for the heater which is also being used as a defroster so when we have like high humidity in here we can put up the heater and uh, get this very fast very dry we also just did a delivery of a boat where we fully air conditioned the front cabin as well as the uh, main cabin with an outlet here for the aircon so the driver bl uh, gets the air condition um, flow, uh, the air condition blowing into his face as well a big outlet there in the back. So this is all possible from us uh, to be done. In this boat, particular boat we even installed lithium-ion batteries 
So if you want to have this air condition running longer time, this is possible to be done with um, lithium ion batteries. Um, good. Then uh, I think it's better you come in for, oh, no, you don't need to, for the, for the, I'm having the microphone with me. So let's speed up a little bit. Frausch are coming behind us. Maybe we should do a, a little race or? No, we don't want to blow her off, huh? <laughs> now, what this boat does, it does easily, um, it, it runs nearly 50 knots, but where we do a good cruising, is even at 35. So we're running 35 knots on a quite decent wave. Very, very comfortable. Just put the autopilot in one second. And if I'm closing the door, then you really get a feeling what it means being in a cabin boat at sea. This is uh, unreal, yeah? So we're running 35 knots. May we get, a, how much fuel do we have? Um, uh, like five, uh, 550 liters of fuel, uh, 450 liters of fuel. And we're running on 35 knots with three liters per nautical mile. So we're doing a turn over port side at that speed. getting warm in here with not having the I just opened the window the uh, upper that's a good feeling now like now you get the air in we have still the side doors closed but it's a big difference now already from temperature in here so we're running 37 knots nothing is vibrating here So we did a small uh, cut on the video, just restarted again. So we're still cruising. Uh, I'm just finding out a little bit what is the, the best um, fuel consumption. Uh, where do we take like a amount of fuel per distance, which is, um, you know, uh, on, a, on a reasonable level. So we're running now 32 knots. We're taking 2.8 liters. 90 liters per hour, both engines together, on 4,500 RPM. Just trimming a little bit up to get a feeling if we even get it a little bit less. The boat has automatic trim, um, which is um, to be uh, switched on here, uh, but um, in, in fact, the automatic trim is also trimming the boat, depending how much I set it between one and five, uh, uh, onto, um, it's not intelligent. It's, it's doing it on, this, on the setup you give it before. So it's always worth a little bit to play out around with it, like with the normal uh, trimming, uh, where do we get the optimal uh, amount or, or the lowest amount of fuel. When we look now, if we could take one scenery again, also in the back, how open we are here in, in that boat. We're getting some waves, sorry for not telling you before, from the side. We're running still with 32 knots just to, to have a feeling of what the boat is doing. Yet again, maybe somebody uh, put 
fast forward on that video. I'm not a native speaker in English, so please excuse if I'm sometimes choosing the wrong words in that video. Um, what else? Uh, helm position, we can swap the or, or, or uh, adjust the, the wheel. Um, there's also a very comfortable seating position here, also from height. Yeah, like also for long cruises, I'm sitting very comfortable here from the height. Still, my favorite position is this upper, like standing, a little bit lean to the back, and there I'm feeling uh, the most comfortable. Let's speed it a little bit up. We are now uh, traveling the uh, lighthouse, entering the Bay of Palma soon, near Portas, Porta, Porta, uh, Portas Vel, sorry. Uh, we came from Adriano. We're running 41 knots now. 150 liters, both engines. Still, yeah, very stable, very amazing driving on that boat. I think there's like, there's many discussions, you know, what is an Axopa, is it worse, what it is, it doesn't even have a really toilet room, the cabin is not that big. This is a driving machine, which there's no other on the market. And if you walk into a harbor, where we just did in Adriano, and you see her in comparison to other boats, like German boats, which is a similar design, or Spanish boats in a similar design. They're all, they're all built around optics. This boat is built around driving. And then, we, they, especially I think with this new 37 Suntop, they made a very cool design around it. But what this boat is built for is, is driving performance. And this, not on a race car level, it's produced or designed on an end customer use level to be driving on a speed level or on a, on a cruising speed level. This has, in my opinion, not been on the market up to now. And this is what the people love on it, especially here in Mallorca, to go, like on this speed now, it takes us from here to Cabrera, it takes us like 25 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah? So we, in this speed, we surround the island in, let me think, 200 nautical, in five hours, we are around the island. Yeah, complete Mallorca, and on this like, and we have quite decent uh, waves still here, um, coming a little bit from the uh, bad weather we had uh, two days ago. Good. What else on the driving? I think for the moment this is uh, the most I can say. Uh, let's say on this 40 knots we are taking 3.8 liters per nautical mile. I can maybe trim her a little bit up again to see what it changes. So. We are running on 4, 000, uh, 5, uh, uh, RPM. Uh, this boat is not uh, just got in the water. It, has, it is here since June. So we probably even have some sea growth uh, on the bottom. So if somebody says, oh, my boat is even taking less fuel, this can absolutely be. Because again, this boat has been in the water uh, more or less the whole warm summer. And what we do now, we go on one of the most famous bays here on the south part of Mallorca. We're going into Portas Vels and uh, we're going to show there uh, a little bit the joystick system because we're having some um, uh, landmarks so we, you can see how we do the movement. And then we do also do the quick uh, gyro and we're going to do also some nice pictures from the air. So let's talk again in Portas Vels. So we're arriving in, I would say, the most famous bay in the southwest of Mallorca. It's a very sheltered bay and very close between Adriano and Porto Portals. Um, we're having the 4th of September 2020 and it's still, yeah, some boats here. Uh, the COVID situation didn't make it uh, so easy uh, in the last uh, weeks. Uh, for Mallorca down here. So what I want to show now is um, what I said, the joystick usage, uh, which I think is, is a very good tool for private use, but as well for tender use. 
Um, I have been um, learning loads, maybe loads is a per completely wrong word. I try to understand a little bit of the tender world being uh, a skipper on a, on a tender during the Monaco Super Yacht Show uh, in 2019. And the most thing I did was waiting. Waiting, uh, and I was very jealous to other uh, boat, boats which have been used there also as tenders during the show who had a dynamic positioning system. Dynamic positioning system from Mercury is called joystick piloting or a GPO and it's called Skyhook. And what the Skyhook does is you push the button and the, the boat keeps the heading as well as the position. And this can help you very much before, like this helps you as a tender captain waiting for uh, your guests uh, in a harbor, in a, in a small harbor or in a bay to not needing, because you're not able to anchor because you really have to be on the spot, stand by, so you can't anchor, so you stay at one place. This is one option. As a private user, you can now put it in uh, and then you, you can walk around the boat and the boat stays where it is and it stays in the same heading as I said. And this helps you, you can put now uh, the, the fenders out, you can prepare ropes on your own and the boat stays, as I said, fully in its position. And you can see now how the engines are working in the back completely on their own to make it possible, what I just explained, keeping the position. So this is one um, uh, like part of the, of the joystick system of Mercury is the skyhook, but we also have the possibility then to use it as a maneuvering tool. And it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's more or less nearly has four dimensions. So what I can do, I can, I can drive it when I'm doing like fast harbor maneuvers. So I just put it forward and turn it. And then the boat does nothing different than you are doing that with the steering wheel here, but it's just much faster because to do what I just do, you would have needed to do uh, like maybe five turns here in the steering wheel. So it's in fact a driving um, you're doing. So it's just turning the engines parallel. So there's nothing specially about maneuvering. It's just turning the engines. So, but parallel, then you have the possibility to do um, like a sidewise uh, driving. So now the boat is maneuvering forward sidewise. And included in this, you can also turn the joystick. So now we're moving to the side. Just have to be careful, there's a swimmer, so I do it to the starboard side. So we're, we're moving now sidewise forward. And on the same time, I'm also moving my front. So to do this maneuver without a joystick, it's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, you, you cannot do that. So we're moving now like sidewise forward. Or what we for sure also can do is moving just sidewise. And there I said it's good to have the bow thruster because it's easier to move the boat in the back harder. So if what I want to do, I just move it harder in the back and just take the bow thruster in addition to it. So we are, when we see to the other boats there, we are moving quite fast sidewise. Yeah, we can see how much water that takes on. So we don't want to do too much mess here because there's still people swimming here in the bay because we are still uh, doing quite some, uh, uh, like, like moving quite some water. We can see that there to go sideways. What we for also can do for sure is just turning it at this point and then we just turn it at the spot in a circle. 360 degrees. So that's what the joystick can do or help you in maneuvering. This, as I said, goes in all direction. It's very helpful for beginners, but also for experts. I think an, an expert, when it's really getting tricky, m me myself, I prefer to having the throttle and the wheel and the thruster. But this is all, only because I've been boating since I'm 10 years old. Uh, and, and I've been so much used to these um, um, util uh, um, these uh, throttles and the wheel uh, th that is when it's getting cr tricky I'm, I'm going more to the things which I know uh, but um, 
still as a as a as an expert you have the help of the skyhook which really helps you waiting for your guests and as well you're having the autopilot which is also included in here which i will show when we when we um getting back out of the bay what i also want to show you because over there we have li being we have lying the uh, i would say sister boat of this boat but as an open boat which is a charter boat here in mallorca it's called calanova you can charter that here from um, on water the company is called you find them all the way online thomas who is the owner of on water is just filming that video very kindly and we also have um, a, a, like a boat club down here so a boat club where you uh, pay a month like a yearly fee or a monthly fee mainly it's done as a yearly fee and then you can do as much boating as you want and it's depending how much you pay it's giving uh, then the size of the boat you can use out, out of our fleet um, I haven't introduced myself in the beginning because I'm used to that everybody knows me no that's a little bit wrong but in German it is so so I'm the importer of an, uh, a Nimbus Axopa uh, Paragon uh, in and, and Brabus in Germany and um, I also have um, the import thing rights here down in Mallorca together with my colleagues as I said from Onwater and as well from Stelo uh, which are running all the service and and as well charter boat school and so on down here uh, in Mallorca but all the boats we are delivering down here are uh, first of all uh, made being like uh, ready PDI and everything in Mallorca so in, in Germany with a crew of 25 people we are there the company is Botepoj called Botepoj as my last name was founded by my father founded in 19 uh, 68 so over uh, 50 years in the market and uh, we are uh, really liking what we do have done on this boat we do custom adaptations and this really fits to the tender market so here we can see the the sister boat um, this is more or less the same boat as we have here also with the multi storage but e like as a as an open boat with the sun sun top roof uh, which is more the boat people are using down here in Mallorca but yet again this is taste when it comes to me um, I would I would like to bo go boating also more or less all year round especially you go in this bay here in October November the water is still above 20 degrees so for Scandinavian uh, I would say still a very high summer temperature <laughs> Uh, and uh, and you're the only one in here and the water is crystal clear because there's no waves there's nobody doing what we just did just uh, doing a turn and, and getting sand uh, from the ground up so so it's crystal clear water you're maybe one one sailboat in here on your own and you can have a perfect swim perfect afternoon and this works also with the boat club we are doing down here Good. Um, for the tender guys, uh, maybe watching still this video, maybe it's already much too boring for them because they are much more te 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 um, technical. Uh, they're looking at it more a technical point of view. Um, but it, it shows now when you would be lying here with a big boat on anchor and you would uh, bring your guests uh, into Portals, which is a very well known harbor here. So you would stay the night in here with a big boat uh, and you would do a commuting to Portals. You just get a feeling how fast we are there uh, and yeah uh, and how easy and that makes you i think um, also see the benefits of such a uh, enclosed boat uh, like we have here on the axapa 37 cabin good i'm just um putting over like to switch back from the joystick into the normal throttle uh, i right, just show one more thing we have the single lever which is also a nice feature from Mercury to put this one away and now I have both engine parallel on one which is very good for fast cruising so just accelerating so we're leaving Porta Svelts 20 minutes past six 
just lock the doors. The doors we leave open. Just to show that I have the autopilot on. So to, we can for sure go on a special point there. Uh, we do that afterwards, but we can adjust one degree or we do 10 degrees in turning it. Now we did 10 degrees. But what I also can do, observe, I just go to portals. Where is it? There is portals. So I go just there's a sable coming in our way. So portals. Go to go to cursor. Just wait that we pass the sailboat. And then we start it. We have to adjust it. And it brings us on a direct way to port the portals, which is maybe a little bit too close to the island. We will see that. Um, yeah, running on autopilot, 40 knots, 5,300 RPM. And this is more or less the max maximum uh, cruising we can do, like on longer distance. So the engines rev maximum 6,000. So this is the limit uh, of, a, of a longer time cruising on 40 knots. But 40 knots, uh, 70 k's an hour at sea. If you you know mark where you are when you do that speed in what time, then it's uh, a very reasonable uh, speed, uh, very comfortable speed. So I think we nearly did half of the way, just past. Falco. Now we're passing Magaluf. Just turning the gyro off at its speed. Just thinking what I else can say. Um, the hull is a twin step hull that makes the boat so fuel efficient. Um, I think there's not many boats on the market at this size where you reach. Um, I just closed this door here so I'm sure the, the audio works. I don't know if there's many boats where you can do this speed at this size of the boat uh, with this okay engine level. It's like 600 horsepower sounds loads. But if you compare that with many ribs, then it's not that much. Uh, and the, the big difference to a big rib is, on the big rib, you always feel now, when the rubbers touch the water, you're always doing a little bit like this, sidewise um, movement. The driver doesn't care because normally you hold the steering, so your body is in tension. But especially for the guests on board, this feeling the rib does is not very, not very comfortable, not very convenient for the guests on board. And here the Axopar uh, has, you know, when it comes to the smoothness running through the wave, a very similar, um, or, or I would say the same like a rib, but uh, we, we don't have this side movement. And if you want to do it even more comfortable, you can use the trim flap and push the button both in the front down, which we will show now when we go out a little bit again. So, um, it took us four minutes up to now, but I think in one minute we are there. So, portals welds to port the portals in five minutes. I didn't need to touch the steering. We went with autopilot on a not very, you know, it's a calm sea, I would say in general, but it's still this small choppy uh, wind waves, which uh, you always have here in the Bay of, Ma of Palma, which is produced to a local thermic wind. Yeah, like it's six minutes, and we see the Capitanaria of Porto Portals in front of us. So I just turn off the autopilot to do a turn onto the to starboard so we're heading to our port Calanova but before uh, we do it all the way back there I just want to go against the wave shortly again 
Uh, we're still running with 40 knots just to get the feeling. So now we're going against the wave. We just had a little bit of jump because there was a small swell. So what do I do now? We're going against the wave now, still with 40 knots. But what I do now, it, it, it's, it's running perfectly. But what I do, I put the trim flaps a little bit down. So I put the nose down against the waves. And I don't know if you can feel it. We're losing speed now a little bit, not so much. One knot, one and a half knots. But we are even driving even more comfortable. Because what we do, we, we, um, we made the water length longer. So the boat is even more cutting the waves. And we're running now with two and a half knots slower, with same um, fuel per hour, not per nautical mile for sure. But it's not bumming at all. And we have now a quite hard wave um, produced by local wind with a little bit of white water on top. So now doing a turn again, I take it out again. Again, we're still on 40 knots. I go into port side turn on 40 knots. And we go with the wave again. This is just insane. This is Driving that boat at sea, uh, this especially this cabin boat, is unreal. Like 40 knots and it feels like, we, you know, we are on a sailboat. You know, it, it's really, really amazing. So, what we still on the, have on the list is the quick. For sure, the cabin inside. Uh, what else do we have on the to-do? No, th I think this is the to, and then some pictures from the top. So, first of all, to show the the uh, quick, we're gonna lie uh, us there into Ieta's Bay uh, because I think this wave which we see here we will have there nicely from the side. So we make a small cut and we see you there again. So we are now lying um, like um, 90 degrees or parallel to the waves coming here in from the side. Now we're having quite a wave coming in and we can see the quick cannot destroy the effect of a wave catching this boat fully from the side. But uh, as you can see when it works here, uh, it's, a, it's a very high spinning um, 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 uh, ball uh, uh, which is uh, turning in the back. And this works then against the turning of the boat, and which it cannot, it cannot do stop this one, but it can really get the amplitudes from the side movements away. If I'm now just putting myself like again, so we have movement, but on a very low level, and now we're gonna hook it out. Now it's hooked out, and now we can see what the difference is, what the boat is doing. Again, we are lying like when we would be on anchor, if we look there on the port side, all the boats turned themselves, surely, with the nose into the wind. So we would be never lying like this. But it happens that the wind direction is not parallel to the wave direction. If you have a swell and on top of the wind wave, or there's maybe a passing like here where many boats are passing, and then you have loads of suddenly coming up uh, waves of other boats passing. And then you're having all the glass on the table. Maybe you're having you know, people on board who really fast get seasick. So we just hook it in now again. Takes a little bit, takes a little bit and now we feel it how it hooks in so we see we are still moving but as i said on a complete different amplitude level yes on big boats like really big boats you have that set strong or maybe you have even two of them that the movement is nearly gone but this would be here on the axopar a big lack of performance because the unit would be too heavy so i think this unit we have installed here 12 volt is really the right choice um, it, it's uh, this is more or less a prototype um, but this will be soon on the market from quick uh, and we have that as an option as well to be installed like here on this boat it's just getting a little bit warm so I want the wind in here so we see it's not it's not a high wave but it's it's big enough because we are moving as I said parallel to the wave inside of that bay and now we have the engine running just with, when we talk about uh, cons cons consumation if we look here in the cabin, we have a battery monitor installed in that boat and we can see the current now, we, we're losing like 30 
um, amps. So if I'm just putting uh, um, the engine off now, so we can see how much con con it's consuming then. Now it's taking, depending on how much it's working, around about 70 amp. So with this gyro on, without the engine being on, we can be, with this battery setup, being lying around four hours in the bay where this system is working. We can also for sure increase the amount of batteries or going for lithium ion batteries. It will just you know, make it a little bit more expensive. Uh, or we can also combine it uh, for sure with the gen set, but not really recommendable here on the Axopa. We don't, we don't have the space for a generator. So in the Axopa, it's always batteries where you're gonna use that with. So uh, when you then having the engines running, just to even if you have it on, just making the engines on and I just putting throttle only to to get the acceleration a little bit up so it shows when the alternators are running better then we are nearly on zero so if you have it on which we also show now on slow cruising especially when you're commuting you maybe do a slow cruise cruising with your guests on board then it's also very helpful to get the uh, amplitudes away, which we will show now again. So I take the throttle only away. And we're going sidewise to these waves. And we have the same effect that the gyro is still working. And the movement of the boat is just much less than if I just turn it off. I just don't know how far I can go there. So we just see uh, more movement we have. I just do a small turn. We go, I don't know how much we see there because it's against the sun. Now we're going with the wave. For sure there's not, not much that system is going to do. So we put it on again. And we're going again sidewise to the waves here it's not really big enough to show that because to show that now we would really would need to have really a big swell now we turn it off again and we can see the movement again is on another level uh, how it is for sure when the stabilizer is on to sum it up is this something you need? No. Is this something you would like, it's nice to have? Yes. Um, is it, you know, on a normal used customer boat uh, going here in the bay needed? No. I, I, because the center of gravity of the, on the Axopa is already so low that you don't feel even there is a movement that much. Uh, is it nice to have on a boat where you, Comm uh, commute people with uh, which are not used to be at sea and don't understand waves and you know don't want to feel the sea yes then it's a, a thing which is for sure uh, nice to have good oh, I think yeah we're, we're just um, showing the inside because we haven't done that now so that's a situation now where we put the sky on we also put the uh, the quick on so we are stabilized as well as the position is in place we just look around there's nobody we are in its way so the front cabin on this boat is the standard one uh, which I also recommend I don't really recommend the comfort package uh, because I, I, I like this uh, kind of material it looks very light in here and uh, yeah if there's the guiding doors they would be here uh, opening um, this particular boat has an option these reading lamps which we installed and as well we have a better mattress lying here which is a special uh, one made in um, Austria to have a better sleeping comfort here in the front um, we have the sink here now it's possible also to have a cupboard here the toilet is as we know below that seat here and yeah in fact it's not a really an overnighter boat it's a commuter so you can sleep here if you have it use it as a tender you can easily have the guy who's running that boat as crew can live here on board so you have an extra spare bed um, when he's maybe also 
getting you ready and mooring in the next harbor, uh, going in, in, in front of the big boat, so he has uh, an extra bed down here. Okay, that was it from the Axapa 37XC with multi-storage from us supplied as a tender. Uh, this boat as well, we can put it as a picture in, has a towing point in the front, which is made from us, so more or less all towing points you can see on the market are done in Germany from us. We deliver them to all the Axapa dealers as well as a towing rope which we have loads of experience with, with 20 captains using them, all being very happy with it. So we can give you all the tender setup you want uh, and for sure also end customers the boats how they want them with semi-customized options done from us in Germany and delivered uh, to tenders all over Europe and otherwise to Germany and Mallorca to end customers. Thanks and Switzerland for sure. Thanks a lot and uh, see you soon.